So give yourself and others lots of grace and patience in this very emotionally unstable times that we're living in. And, and learn the tools. Man, I've shared all kinds of tools with you all throughout a lot of my episodes and stuff. Learn some emotional tools that you can apply in your life and develop and create as part of your consistent and regular emotional fitness program. Provide yourself and your team with that. So again, I shared a couple things here. Number one, start, start off each morning. Hey, hey team, how are you feeling today? Give me one word with how you're feeling. And again, be safe with, with whatever emotion they share with you. Then number two, and you can also do that before you guys go to go leave home, leave the, your job at the end of the day, before close of business. Hey, just before the end of the day, just another little quick check-in. How are you guys feeling right now? How are you doing? And then validate and affirm that emotion. Doesn't mean you have to agree with the emotion. That emotion is their emotion. It's that it's their it's their feeling that they're feeling. You can't. We can't judge that feeling or emotion that they are experiencing in the moment. Feelings and emotions aren't bad or good. It's it's a sign. It's data. It's input. Just acknowledge it. Don't poo-poo it. Definitely don't ignore it. Validate and affirm that particular emotion. Hope you enjoyed our last episode in my interview with Black Brazilian uh, Jiu Jitsu four three black belt Professor Marcelo Mata from Prime BJJ in Colorado Springs, sharing some incredible insights. Being a three decade world class athlete, high elite level competitor, and gym owner for a number of years. He shared some tremendous insights that I think you guys would, would really enjoy. And just hearing the mindset of a world-class athlete and a high-level competitor for, again, three decades in a very, very mentally, emotionally, physically challenging sport and activity like Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, I just think there's a lot of great lessons that he shared. So today, I'm going to talk about handling big emotions on a team, how to handle big emotions on a team. So, and, and first of all, I want to thank you guys for watching. If you're watching on our YouTube channel, EQ Gangster, if you're listening on our podcast, EQ Gangster, if you visited our website, eqgangster.com, thank you so much for letting us be a part of your journey, your own emotional growth journey, and, and you know, letting us, you know, and you being a part of our emotional growth journey, my emotional growth journey as well. Really appreciate that. For me, the there's a tremendous, tremendous support mentally and emotionally having a social support network. And I just again want to want to thank you for letting me be a part of your social support network, if you will, as a podcast or YouTuber who is providing content that is hopefully adding value to your life. Now, a disclaimer: I share this every you know every handful of episodes. I am not a psychologist, I'm not a psychiatrist, I'm not a therapist. I am an entrepreneur who has taken ownership of my feelings and emotions and really developed an intentional emotional fitness program the last three to four years of my life. And I just want to share my lessons learned. At any point in your emotional growth journey, if you feel like you need professional help, please get professional help. We get help in so many different areas. Why don't we get help in our life with our emotions, with our our psyche, our our, our um, yeah, our mental and emotional health? Every professional athlete has a coach, has multiple coaches. Big top business guys have multiple uh, smart people in their lives to help them make the best decisions possible. Why don't we? So again, if at any point of your emotional growth journey, you feel like you need professional help, please 
seek it out. Find someone that you connect with, that you click with, that can offer and provide that support and that help working through maybe some more of the intense, more challenging emotional things that you've been through or experienced in your life. Okay, so I'm going to share a number of different examples of why this topic is is very relevant and important to me and to a lot of other people. Spoke with, I had a couple corporate coaching clients this morning who deal primarily in healthcare, healthcare and and education. Two fields that are tremendously impacted by all the vaccine, don't vaccine, mask, don't mask topics and issues. And much of that news and information changes on a daily basis. You know, new information, different information, changing information, uh, depending on you listen to information. And so instability, and again, my disclaimer, I'm not a psychologist, I'm not a psychiatrist. In my research personally over the past, you know, three, four years, instability, period, creates anxiety and stress. It creates a sense of lack of control in our environment, which causes stress and anxiety. So in a, in a landscape, in a national landscape, an even global landscape of constantly changing information, again, regardless of where you're at in the camps, which camp you fall in, doesn't matter. The information, the, the global national landscape is constantly changing, which alone causes stress and anxiety. So then imagine being in education, being in healthcare, you are on the front lines if you're an educator, if you're in, in healthcare, of the you're on the front lines of, of, of dealing with all of this, dealing with the, you know, in the fact that you deal with students in the education side and in the fact that you deal with patients on the healthcare side, you you're on the receiving end and the you know of 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 all these different changes in policies and again depending on what state you're in and, and, and country you live in and can that can exacerbate and amplify the already very unstable environment emotional environment that we're living in right now and so I was talking to to again a, a couple of my corporate clients today and they one guy shared that he went to a very large hospital recently in his in his visits across the country and that particular hospital was running at about 60% capacity because it is staffed at 60% because of all the healthcare workers that have left And many of those, I read an article, I've shared this before, an article probably three or four months ago, a third of healthcare workers are leaving their jobs because they are overwhelmed and exhausted and fatigued physically, mentally, and emotionally. And that that does not include the percentage of healthcare workers that are going to be either leaving or getting fired because of the vaccine requirements that some facilities are are going through and and implementing. So the amount of, you know, I mean, just imagine, again, you may be a healthcare worker listening to this. Imagine the amount of stress and anxiety operating at when your organization, your business, your your company, in this case, uh, let's say a hospital, for example, is operating at 60% capacity. That means that the 60% are there are getting overworked, overwhelmed, exhausted, again, in all those different areas, physically, mentally, emotionally. H- how long can someone handle that? That type of pressure, that kind of stress, that type of... And what this gentleman shared was, you know, these you know healthcare workers, a lot of them get into healthcare because they love helping. They love caring for, they love nurturing, they love, uh, uh, um, you know, serving folks and, and, and they love the medical field and that kind of thing and all the things that come with that. 
Now, there's some that maybe they, they did it for other reasons, but many of them, if not most of them, you know, they, they want to help other people. The dynamic he shared was so many of them are so exhausted and overwhelmed and, and fatigued, mainly emotionally, physically, their ability to be empathetic and care has gone out the window. They are so, he didn't say this word, but the vibe that it gave me, it's almost like they're zombies taking care of zombies. They are so exhausted and overwhelmed. It's like, next, boom, all right, do this, do that, take this, do this, da da, da. Okay, next, all right, take this, do this, do this. And which I'm sure is, is, is hard for them to, you know, feeling like, man, I, I, I don't have any, any extra bandwidth to be empathetic and, and caring and, um, you know, you know, kind of, kind of, uh, uh, yeah, showing that love in, in, in my work. I know that would be tough for me if I ever got to the place where my podcast and our business, my coaching, if I ever got to that place where, okay, all right, just do this, just say this, just do this exercise, just, I'd, I'd feel terrible. I mean, part of, man, a huge part of, 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 of me giving so much to our, to our podcast, to our business, to our, you know, our membership group, the EQ Mafia, to my coaching clients is because I, I, I love people and I want to see their lives transformed, genuinely changed and transformed. That's a beautiful aspect about emotional health and emotional intelligence. It doesn't just make you a better employee on the job, a better cop, a better firefighter, a better medical, uh, 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 you know, uh, you know, medical worker, medical staff, a uh, better leader, a better military, you know, leader. It makes you better at home. It makes you a better husband, wife, father, mother, parent, um, sibling. It helps out every single area of your life. And so, so that was, that was, so anyway, that was one story that is fresh off the presses. Literally, he just got back from his trip, visiting different hospitals. That was one dynamic he shared from his, his visits, which is heartbreaking, man. That's, that's not, that's going on right now. I said, man, that's, that's like a healthcare crisis. If the hospitals, and I don't know, again, that was one story of a hospital. I can't speak for, I, I have no idea. I haven't done any research, but man, if that's, I can only imagine that many other hospitals and clinics are probably very similar. I said, man, I said, dude, that sounds like a healthcare crisis. Like that's, that's no joke. And then takes me to another conversation that I had recently with a gentleman who is a, an LEO law enforcement officer. He's a SWAT on a SWAT team. He said in his particular state that he's in, law enforcement numbers are down by 50%. Imagine being a law enforcement officer in the current climate that we're living in. People talking about defund the police, that kind of thing. Well, well, of course, what happens when you defund the police? Obviously, crime in many cities across the country is just going through the roof. So is, is you know, again, I can't imagine what it's like to be a law enforcement officer in today's climate with our with our country, our society right now. Um, another gentleman I spoke to, I do jujitsu with a number of, of, of LEOs and, and first responders, m- medical folks, firefighters, law enforcement folks, and have also expressed similarly the that the number of folks that are leaving law enforcement is is going through the roof, and it's greater than the number of new the new uh, uh, LEOs coming out of the, the academies, the, the police academies and stuff. Between a health crisis and a, a crime epidemic, if we start, if this goes na- you know nationwide, I'm just giving you a couple anecdotal stories from a couple folks that I know personally, but if this is happening nationwide, y'all, that's, what's that gonna look like a year from now, two years from now, when hospitals are at 50%, 40%, 30%, Law enforcement offices, uh, departments are are operating at fifty percent, forty percent, thirty percent. Y'all, this is this is no joke. The the potential of what 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 we're looking at here. 
Um, so, so here's the, here's the thing. And, and, you know, and here's what I'm blessed to be in a position to add value to medical folks, firefighters. I'm, I'm potentially going to be working with a, a particular fire department and a number of folks at putting together an emotionally intelligent leader development program, helping potentially put that together for a, a, a fire department. Also working with some of these, these law enforcement uh, uh, police departments and, and, and potentially SWAT teams helping them develop some tools, some emotional coping tools and stuff so that they can operate at a higher capacity with all the incredible amounts of, of, of very emotionally charged situations that they have to deal with on a daily, hourly basis. And so here's what it made me think of in talking to my, my, my uh, corporate, a couple of my corporate clients today. So, a couple questions let me throw throw out at you right now. So your company, your company that you're a part of or that you you own, what's the emotional state, the emotional health state of your company? Your family, what's the emotional, the state of, of the emotional health of your family? Your military unit, what's the emotional state, emotional health state of your military unit. You, what is your own emotional state, emotional health state? How are you doing emotional? If you were to just do a quick assessment on a scale from one to 10, easy peasy, scale one to 10, 10, you're doing great emotionally. One, you're doing not, you're not doing great. Where would you rate each one of those areas, your, your company, your organization, your military unit, your family, yourself, how would you rate yourself? And, and then you could even do a, 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 what's the, you know, now average all those together, right? What's the overall emotional state of your, your spheres of influence? You could come, you know, add those up, divide it by the number of different areas you're involved in and, and see kind of what's the, what's the overall number that you have there. Obviously, the one that's weighted the most is your own. Your own emotional state, emotional health state is going to impact, is going to, you're going to feel that the most, obviously. Um, you're going to feel the other ones too, but you're going to feel your own emotional state more than the other ones. So as a leader, how do you handle the emotions of your team? Again, that's the topic that we're talking about here. What what are some ways that you can be a more emotionally intelligent, empathetic leader given the, the very unstable climate that we are all living in, in the times that we're in right now? I've just got a, a, a handful of ideas here I'm just going to throw out at you. So one is you can check in with them every morning. Check in with your family, check in with your team, check in with yourself. Hey, how are you guys feeling today? How are you doing today? How are you feeling? And, and, and be, maybe be even as specific as give me give me one word that would describe your emotional state right now. What's one word? And and here's the thing. In order and for those of y'all that are watching on YouTube, I'm looking at my notes here. If you're listening to the podcast, obviously that's irrelevant. But if you see me looking down, that's just understand that's what I'm doing here. He, he, and now, in order to ask the, 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 that question or those questions, in order to ask those questions, you, that means you have to be safe as a leader. You have to create a, an emotionally safe culture and environment to even ask that question. Because I know there are some cultures out there, some companies out there, if the leader were to stand up and say, hey, how are you feeling today? Oh, great, 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 great. Because the team knows that the leader actually doesn't really care. But they just want you to, they just want to check the block and see, I ask my team every day how they feel. I do already do that, Noble. I already do that. I'm, I'm good. My team's good. They're, 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 they're rock stars. Are they? Do they feel that there is enough transparency and vulnerability on the team within the organization that they can be safe enough to express their true emotions? Are you, are you comfortable Hearing maybe some bigger, unpleasant emotions. I'm feeling depressed. Are you going to freak out? Are you going to, how are you going to handle that? Can you handle that? 
Can you can you be a safe place for somebody that is feeling some intense, unpleasant emotions? How do you do that? Another excellent question. So, so you, you want to make sure that again, you you know that's that's critical. If you don't create a safe environment for them to express the emotions, this exercise is going to be completely irrelevant. It, they've got to feel safe and okay at expressing their true emotions, regardless of how unpleasant or intense that emotion may be. Next thing, because here's the thing, how does it help them, you know, your team, you or your team, if you ask them how they're doing and you don't want an honest answer and you only want them to check the block and just say, hey, I'm, I'm asking you, but just tell me you're doing fine. Who's that helping by, by asking how they're doing and not wanting a real answer. That's, that's helping nobody. That is, that's creating a, that's, that's creating a toxic culture, a toxic environment, an emotionally unhealthy environment. So one way to change that environment and, 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 and create a more open, honest, transparent environment, vulnerable environment is by you as the leader feeling safe and comfortable expressing your own intense, potentially intense, unpleasant emotions. And, and so that's, that's, a, that's one way. And realize this, just because you're struggling or someone on your team is struggling, it does not mean that they're, they're, they're a weak leader or they're incompetent or they're incapable. It means they're human. Tell me a human on the planet that does not experience emotions, that does not experience ups and downs. So just because someone is in a, in a, in a valley, it doesn't mean that they're going to jump off a cliff. It doesn't mean that, you know, they're, they're this weak leader. Now, before my emotional growth, I would have said that because I was emotionally clueless. I, I you know, I've been, emo I've told you guys many times, I've been, I'm a, I've been emotionally clueless most of my life. So I would have said, oh man, you're having a tough day. Suck it up, buttercup. Put some, you know, put, put some foot powder on and, and, and move out and draw fire. I would have not been an empathetic leader. Now I realize, again, up through my growth journey and stuff, emotions affect all of us. And we all experience the gamut of emotions, whether or not we recognize them or we're self-aware enough to recognize them. Even for me as a stuffer and avoider for most of my life, I experienced the full gamut of emotions. I just, I just didn't realize it. I, I, I didn't have the self-awareness to even, to even realize what I was feeling when I was feeling it. But it wasn't like I didn't have emotions. It's like, a, it's like not having the chemical, emotions are chemicals. Emotions are just a, a, a specific chemical combination. You can't shut down your chemical combinations that happen in your body. That, that happens whether or not you're aware of it or not. It's impacting you whether you like it or not. Something I say all the time in a lot of my different podcast episodes is unaddressed emotional issues do not get better over time. So all my first responders, my, my law enforcement officers, my firefighters, my, my, my LEOs, uh, uh, my medical folks, not processing your emotions is not healthy. It's not healthy for you. It's not healthy for your family. It's not healthy for your the people that you're serving, the customers that you're serving. Those emotional knots. If you listen to that one of my previous episodes recently, it, the, it's one on. It's I think it's called something about emotional knots. If you don't massage out those emotional knots, they will turn into an emotional Charlie horse. If you don't massage those emotional knots it will you will get locked up emotionally you will you will get emotionally hijacked emotionally triggered and and and, and it could happen on a regular basis with a lot of intensity if you don't massage out those emotional knots and i'm not talking about listen y'all i'm not talking about becoming some warm fuzzy kumbaya let's all hold hands kind of person it's, it's about learning how to effectively manage, identify, acknowledge, identify, process, and manage 
the emotions that you're having anyway so that you can begin to make more effective decisions. What's the consequence of, 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 of massaging your emotional knots, of learning how to cope and deal with your emotions in a productive way? All the addictions out there, all the addictions out there, what are they a function of? Again, I'm not a psychologist, I'm not a psychiatrist. So many of the addictions out there, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's an unhealthy emotional coping mechanism. Any unproductive behaviors that you have very well could be an expression that you have developed as a coping mechanism, as an unhealthy coping mechanism to your inability right now to deal with and manage those emotions that you've experienced. Maybe from an emotional injury that you experienced years ago. Maybe from your childhood. That's where we get our emotional foundation from. Our emotional framework is developed and built as children. All of us. All of us. And, they, and, and then we just build on that emotional foundation regardless of how strong or weak that foundation is or, or how broken that, that foundation may be. So I say broken. So, you know, a lot of the, 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 the things that happen to us as children, we, we create these sur emotional survival mechanisms that may serve us at the time. So I'm not saying, you know, so it, it's, it's, it's a, um, what I'm saying is a nuanced, it's very nuanced. So I don't, you know, injured and hurt, absolutely. Our brains and our bodies are amazing survival mechanisms. And again, your coping mechanisms may have served you at one point while you were in that particular moment or season of life that you were in. Today, those same coping mechanisms may not be serving you. They may not be productive or healthy for you. So, um, so give yourself and others lots of grace and patience in this very emotionally unstable times that we're living in. And, and learn the tools. I mean, I've shared all kinds of tools with you all throughout a lot of my episodes and stuff. Learn some emotional tools that you can apply in your life and develop and create as part of your consistent and regular emotional fitness program. Provide yourself and your team with that. So again, I shared a couple things here. Number one, start, start off each morning. Hey, hey team, how are you feeling today? Give me one word with how you're feeling. And again, be safe with, with whatever emotion they share with you. Then number two, and you can also do that before you guys go to, go leave home, leave the, your job at the end of the day, before close of business. Hey, just before the end of the day, just another little quick check-in. How are you guys feeling right now? How are you doing? And then validate and affirm that emotion. Doesn't mean you have to agree with the emotion. That emotion is their emotion. It's, it's their emotion. It's their feeling that they're feeling. You can't, we can't judge that feeling or emotion that they are experiencing in the moment. Feelings and emotions aren't bad or good. It's, it's a sign. It's data. It's input. Just acknowledge it. Don't poo-poo it. Definitely don't ignore it. Validate and affirm that particular emotion that they're feeling. Show some empathy, which is another for, term for empathy. When you, when you can validate and affirm how someone is feeling. Put yourself in their shoes based on the context of what's going on in their life and show some empathy. That is not showing weakness. That's showing compassion. Um, okay, and then another thing is, like I mentioned before, is also you as a leader can also demonstrate vulnerability and transparency in your own leadership. Now, now there's, 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 you know, there's a balance to that. Do you want to share all your dirt and deep gory details? No, of course not. But it is important to share a level of vulnerability and transparency with your team and, and share, like, let's say uh, uh, a scenario where maybe somebody, you, you were working on a business deal together, the business deal fell through, and now everyone is looking at you like, like, 
oh crap, what's the boss going to say now about this deal that we almost took to the to the end zone, almost scored a touchdown, and we got intercepted on the five yard line? What's what's the quarterback going to do? What's the coach going to do? Are they going to freak out? Are they going to cave? No. Listen, you you be solution oriented. Hey guys, we're going to work through this. But listen, I feel upset and frustrated and maybe a little angry and maybe a little disappointed, maybe a little sad that I threw an interception. Absolutely, those are some of the emotions I'm experiencing by this business deal that didn't that that got that got derailed the last minute. How are you feeling about this business deal that just got derailed the last minute. So I just shared my feelings and emotions. I was transparent. I also want to know how you're feeling about it. Okay, everyone goes around. Okay, all right, guys. So now let's, and let's, you know, let's, I want to create a safe space where we can all share how we're feeling about this. All right, how are we doing now? All right, good. We've kind of let all, all our feelings out. There's, there's catharsis, there's healing in just discussing your feelings and emotions and allowing others to discuss their feelings and emotions. And maybe you give them, you know, everyone gets 30 seconds to share their emotions, a minute, whatever, right? Because you don't want to turn it into an eight hour therapy session, but you do want to create a safe space. Okay, guys, we're all going to take 30 seconds to just share, write down, take, heck, take, take 20, take 30 seconds right now, write down every emotion you can think of that you're feeling right now about this business deal that just got you know, uh, uh, derailed. Okay, great. We I write down five emotions. I write down 20 emotions, whatever. And also the number of emotions that you can describe accurately also is kind of a sign of your emotional intelligence. The more accurate and, and the more uh, uh, emotions that you can express and write down, there's a there's been research that that reflects a greater emotional intelligence. So the greater your emotional vocabulary potentially can lead to a greater emotional intelligence. So just keep that in mind. And you may want, when you're doing this exercise with your teams, to, to either put on a, a project, you know, on a, on, a, on a slide, on a big screen, the emotion wheel. Google the emotion wheel, or you can go to eqgangster.com. We've got the emotion wheel on there somewhere. And use that as a reference. Put, put that up on the big screen while you have everyone take 15, 20, 30 seconds to write down every emotion that they're feeling. Then take another 30 seconds per person to share, okay, these are my five emotions. These are my 10 emotions. These are my three emotions. These are my 15 emotions that I'm feeling, all right? Okay, let's talk about it. Boom, so boom, you go around. And then, okay, guys, now, based on all that, thank you all for your vulnerability and transparency for sharing all that. Now, let's let's get back to work and let's create some more opportunities and more solutions. So, Feeling and expressing these emotions does not have to be this big, giant, again, eight-hour therapy session, nor does it mean anyone's weak. By allowing your team the freedom and, and place and time to communicate that stuff in a safe environment with each other, guess what that does? That increases the, the, the culture or organization's emotional agility and resilience, which are two critical, critical skills that we have to have in the times that we're living in right now. Resilience and emotional agility. And by allowing yourself and your team that time and space to do that, that exercise is an example, I'm telling you that can that can create an organization and a team that is emotionally agile and resilient. So Anyway, hopefully that helps. For those of you that want to take your emotional fitness program to the next level, check out eqgangster.com forward slash mafia. eqgangster.com forward slash mafia. We got tons of content on there, 100 to 150 hours plus of great content on emotional intelligence and emotional health, tools, how to, how to cope, how to... Uh, uh, manage and deal with stress and anxiety, how to handle conflict, how to handle triggers, how to avoid getting triggers, how to reduce the number of triggers, how to become more emotionally stable yourself, how to uh, uh, become emotionally stable in the, in the face of and the midst of uh, uh, conflict. 
lot of different things, how to handle relationships better, how to be more effective in relationships, how to communicate better, how to make better decisions. All these things are impacted by emotional health and emotional intelligence. Again, join us, and then you know, in this in this group, join us in this group, um, and we're also we also are going to go live and have live group coaching at least once or twice a month to have a safe, supportive, encouraging environment to discuss these things in our own emotional growth journeys together alongside each other. So again, eqgangster.com forward slash mafia. Thank you for sharing, subscribing, rating, and reviewing, and letting us be a part of your emotional growth journey.